Okay, here we go. This is a beautiful bhajan, which I don't know how to sing. <laughs> but anyway, I'll try singing anyway. <laughs> it's called Sri Raja Dhamma Mahimam Rita. It's uh, by Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami. So we'll need some cartels if we have some. Okay. So those of you who want to follow on your phones, it's called Sri Vraja Dhamma Mahimamrita. Jaya Radhe Jaya Krishna Jaya Jai Ram, 
So in the uh, ninth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, towards the very final verses in the final chapter, starts to prepare the uh, way for the advent of Sri Krishna. So this verse is from Canto 9, chapter 24, and this is verse number 66. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya 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 Om Namo Jatogata Pritta Griham Jatogata Prittam Griham Raja Ekatarto Jatogata Prittam Jatogatam Pritta Graha Raja Ekatarto Advad Bupam Sutta Satani Krito Ridra Raha Advad Bupam Sutta Satani Krito Ridra Raha Upad Gateshu Purusho Kratu Bir Samidye Upad Gateshu Purusha Kratu Bir Samidye Atmanam Atmanigamam Pratiyam Janesu Jato Gratam Prita Graham Praja Eta Harto Jato Gratam Prita Graham Rupam Sutta Satani Kutori Daraha Adapa Rupam Sutta Satani Atmanam Atmanigamam Pratiyan Janesu Atmanam Atmanigamam Pratiyan Janesu Jato Gritam Prita Grihan Raja Eti Tharto Jato Gritam Prita Grihan Raja Eti Rupam Susatani Kuto Ridaraha Upad yateshu purusho krati bisa meye. Atmanam atmanigamam pratiyan janesu. Shut up, you 
Pandajis out there? Or no Pandajis? Pandajinis? Okay. Jata. After taking birth as the son of Vasudev, Gata went away, but Trir Grihat from the houses of his father, Rajam to Vrindavan, Edhita Artha. To exalt the position of Vrindavan. Hadvam, killing, there. Upan, ripun, ripun, many demons. Sutta Satani, hundreds of sons. Krita Uru Dara. Accepting many thousands of wives, the best of women, Utpadye, begot, Teshu, in them, Purusa, the Supreme Person, who exactly resembles a human being, Grat to be, by many sacrifices, Samiye, worshipped Atmanam himself because he is the person worshipped by all sacrifices. Atmanigamam, exactly according to the ritualistic ceremonies of the Vedas. Pratayan. Expanding the Vedic principles, Janesu, among the people in general. Mm, so, Sukadeva Goswami is speaking here. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, known as Lilu Purushottam, appeared as the son of Vasudeva, but immediately left his father's home and went to Vrindavan to expand his loving relationship with his confidential devotees. In Vrindavan, the Lord killed many demons, and afterwards he returned to Dwarka, while according to Vedic principles, he married many wives who were the best of women. He got through them hundreds of sons and performed sacrifices for his own worship to establish the principles of household life. Mm. Srila Prabhupada's purport. As stated in the Bhagavad Gita, Vedaishyasava Maham Eva Vedyo, by all the Vedas, it is Krishna who is to be known. Lord Krishna, setting the example by his own behavior, performed many ritualistic ceremonies described in the Vedas and established the principles of Grihastha life 
by marrying many wives and begetting many children just to show people in general how to be happy by living according to the Vedic principles. The center of Vedic sacrifice is Krishna. <clears throat> Vedais chasavayar aham eva vedya. To advance in human life, human society must follow the Vedic principles personally demonstrated by Lord Krishna in his household life. The real purpose of Krishna's appearance, however, was to manifest how one can take part in the loving affairs with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So here's the essence right here. The real purpose of Krishna's appearance, however, was to manifest how one can take part in loving affairs with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Reciprocation of loving affairs and ecstasy are possible only in Vrindavan. Therefore, just after his appearance as the son of Vasudev, the Lord immediately left for Vrindavan. In Vrindavan, the Lord not only took part in loving affairs with the father and mother, the gopis and the cowherd boys, but also gave liberation to many demon, demons by killing them. As stated in Bhagavad Gita, Baritranaya Sarunam Vinasanaya Chaduskritam, the Lord appears in order to protect the devotees and kill the demons. This is fully exhibited by his personal behavior. In Bhagavad Gita, the Lord is understood by Arjun to be Purusham Asvata Shashvatam Divyam the eternal, transcendental, supreme person. Here also, we find the words Upadya Teshu Purusha. Therefore, it is to be concluded that the absolute truth is Purusha, a person. The impersonal feature is but one of the features of his personality. Ultimately, he is a person. He is not impersonal. Not only is he Purusha, a person, but he is the Lila Purusham, Tam, the best of all persons. Om Agyanti Medandasya Gena Jana Salakaya Chaksu Unmilitam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurve Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasnaya Bhutale Srimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvise sa sunya vadi pasyatya de satarine. Panchakalpa turubischa kripa sindu pe pacha. Patitanam bhavane bio vaishnave bio namaho namaha. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda. Sri Advaita Gadadara Sivasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. Mm. So one thing we note here as his, as his personality is one outstanding point that's being mentioned. After the Lord appeared in the jail cell of Kamsa, he didn't waste any time. He wanted to get to Vrindavan. <laughs> because there is why he came, in order to give pleasure and to experience pleasure himself with his eternal residence of Vrindavan. So as was described in that pastime, um, as soon as he appeared, of course, he appeared in his forearm form as Vaikuntha Krishna, uh, wearing helmet and various opulent decorations with four arms. His mother, Devaki, was quite overwhelmed. She temporarily lost her mood of motherly affection and saw him as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But Krishna didn't like that so much. He didn't want to disturb that mood. And so he immediately covered her over, and though she saw him in that form, she was still frightened for his safety, thinking that Kamsa would come and find out, yes, now the seventh or eighth child has been born, and then he would come and do what he had done to the other children, except for the seventh child, which was Balaram, and kill them all. So her mother of affection returned, and Krishna liked that. 
Krishna doesn't want to disturb those loving moods. But sometimes we see in his pastimes that happens. Just like when he uh, opened his mouth to show his mother the inside of his mouth, the cowherd boys of Vrindavan, beheaded by Balaram, were saying, Krishna, they went to Mother Yasoda. You know, he's doing all kinds of nonsense stuff. Now he's eating dirt. And she thought, oh my God, he's got nice milk products and he's eating dirt. So she was thinking, maybe he'll get sick and the dirt stuck in his mouth. She said, open your mouth. He did. But what she saw was not dirt. She saw the entire creation, all the cosmic arrangements of the planets, the stars, the moon, the luminaries, everything in existence was in the mouth of Krishna. And her natural propensity to love Krishna as a mother was lost. And she started to think, and she saw herself also in the mouth of Krishna. And she thought, oh my God, my son's God. <laughs> she was praying to God that God is now my son. <laughs> and, uh, and Krishna realized what was happening, so he, he turned the switch. He, this, this inter it's interesting, you see how powerful Krishna, he can change he can change your mood also. <laughs> he can do anything. He's so powerful that we think we're actually acting according to our own desires. And we are, and Krishna allows that. But if he wants, he can derail us and put us in another way. He's completely all-powerful. So he did that, but in a very loving way with his mother. And here again. And now he's so eager. And it's explained, and this is very interesting because there is some controversy centered around this one principle, that who is the actual mother and father of Krishna? Is it Vasudeva and Devaki, or is it Soda and Nanda? <laughs> any, any comments about that? Well, as part of the commentary of Goswami. Jiva Goswami? Vishnachakalaya Thakur in the 10th canto that actually Krishna had actually was a twin for when Mother Jasoda gave birth she actually gave birth to twins she gave birth to uh, Yogamaya and Krishna Samadhi uh, uh -huh. she was so tired she fell asleep and she didn't know who she gave birth to and therefore when Vasudeva Vasudev, took Krishna in the forearm form, he wound up in, in the uh, in the river Jamuna and just grabbed Krishna or Vasudev and Krishna wound up uh, well, Vasudev when he came to well, actually, when Vasudev came to Vrindavan and he saw uh, Vasudev Krishna who he had taken there merged into the body of Krishna and therefore Krishna was actually the son of Mother Jasoda, and then Vasudev took up Yogamaya and took her to uh, the Christian Yeah, back to Mathura, yeah. So actually... So what's, Krishna, the, what's the answer then? The answer is that Mother Jasoda is actually the mother of just Krishna. And Krishna refers to Devaki and Vasudev as mother and, and father. That's where he is. Huh? Depends where he is because Krishna doesn't take a foot out of Vrindavan. So is they both of them the correct parents or one is more superior? One, one is the parents of Vasudev, Vasudev, one is the parents of Krishna. Yeah, so that's correct. But how do, when we actually get down to the essence, who's the real parent? Krishna. Yeah. I mean in terms of this particular Leela. No, it's religious other. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we can accept that. <laughs> but those who have the Vaikuntha mood will disagree <laughs> anyway. <laughs> but that's okay, they can disagree. <laughs> Doesn't change the fact. Yeah, so um, as Maharaj narrated, when Vasudev brought Krishna, it was interesting because after he was born, the uh, 
all of the jailers fell asleep and all the locks on the uh, bars of the jail opened up. The chains from Vasudev fell off and Krishna was now ready to go to Vrindavan. And it was the middle of the night and it was a rainstorm. But Krishna was so eager to go, it didn't matter. So when he was, when Vasudev weighed, waist deep, was waiting in the Jamuna River, and Jamuna was thinking, oh my God, here is the Supreme Personality of God, and he's crossing through my waters, and his father is holding him up, and I'm not getting any dust from his lotus feet onto my waters. So Krishna understood that, so he slipped out of the arms of Vasudeva and fell into the Jamuna, and there was frantic excitement. What happened? Where's Krishna? Is he drowning? Krishna was just swimming along in the Jamuna, and Jamuna was so happy, and Krishna was giving her his dust. Even though it's a water, he st she still got dust. <laughs> it was watery dust. <laughs> So uh, this Krishna likes to please his devotees. This is a very, and this is one of the reasons why he came to Vrindavan, just to show his his loving uh, mood towards his devotees who are eager to associate with him. Therefore, he's called. Not only is he a person, but he's called Lila Purushottam. He performs his activities as the supreme person, the best of all persons. Prabhupada says something in this purport, in which I'm going to ask you a question on. It says here, to advance in human life, human society must follow the Vedic principles personally demonstrated by Lord Krishna in his household life. And what did he do? He married many wives. So we're supposed to follow that? Any questions or comments on that? Anybody want to put themselves in jeopardy by saying something? <laughs> no, no statements? So what does it mean here? I mean, Prabhupada says that. He says here, he sets the example by his own behavior, performs rituals, establishes grihasta life by marrying many wives and begetting many children, just to show, in general, how to be happy by living according to Vedic principles. So the conclusion is you have to have many wives to be happy, right? I'm just, I'm throwing it out for discussion. Huh? That's, it doesn't say family, it says wives, yeah. <laughs> Well, sometimes for one of us, some of us, one is too much, but anyway. <laughs> but that's another completely part of the Bhagavatam, which we're not going to discuss right now. <laughs> now, the point is here that uh, Krishna is demonstrating the ideal uh, householder. What is the ideal that one who is in that position should take responsibility for all of the affairs of household life. In other words, whatever he performed, he did it in the perfect way, according to the principles given by us in the Vedas. <laughs> so that is the actual point. Prabhupada is not uh, what we say, uh, encouraging uh, was a polygamy here. Although he does say that in many of the statements in his, that actually because the women population is greater than the male population, it's natural to have polygamy because that way all of the women will have husbands. <laughs> but, that, but this doesn't apply in this particular case. So Krishna, he, he wants to give pleasure to his devotees, so he appears in his own personal abode. Sri Vrindavan Dham is the lovely son of his, of his mother. Sometimes I'll deviate a little bit from the uh, theme that we're presently mentioning and ask the question, maybe some of you know. It says that, that Krishna came pravrittanayam sarunam vinasanaya chaduskritam. He came to destroy all of the demons. 
And obviously there was, as it says in the beginning of the Bhagavatam, that the world was overburdened with demoniac kings who were ruling. And uh, so what is the history? Anybody know the history that led up to that situation? Yes, okay. We have the, the star student here, okay. <laughs> How about giving a chance to the... Sure. the <laughs> Go for it. Anybody else? There is a particular pastime, it's from the Mahabharata, and it mentions that um, um, when Parasaram was here many thousands of years prior to the appearance of Krishna in this form, um, he was very angry to see the rulers of the world very proudly ruling the world. They were kings, they were opulent, they had power, they had prestige, but they were arrogant. And because they were arrogant and ruled in that way, Parasaram, who was an expansion of the Supreme Lord himself, came and he destroyed 21 generations of Kshatriyas. And when he did that, as it's explained in the Mahabharata, there was no rule in the world. All the kings had been killed. And now that became a problem. So what to do? There needs to be some type of rule in the world at least. And of course, of course, of course saintly rule should be there. And so what they did is they made a plan to again reestablish saintly rule in the world. And this was a difficult plan. They asked all of the sadhus, many of the sadhus who were living at that time, to come together with the princesses and produce a new generation of kings. And so they did. They sacrificed their austerity and uh, for the sake of, again, creating uh, a saintly rule around the world. So this went on for many hundreds of years. And again, the, the earth was now ruled by saintly kings. But this is the material world. <laughs> so nothing is permanent. <laughs> Things keep changing. And so this went on for some time. And then finally a big battle broke out in the heavenly planets between the demigods and the demons. And the demigods were in the upper hand in this battle, but the demons decided they needed a base in order to fight the demons, demigods. And so they took the base as earth. So they made a plan to take birth in so many species of life and enter into the earth planet. And that's where you come to Krishna's appearance. So you see many of the demons, there were Agasura, snake, and Keshi, the horse, Aristosura, a bull, various types of species who were actually demoniac in nature, had come to, again, control the earth from that point. And then we hear how Mother Earth, Bhumi, the predominant deity of the earth, feeling overburdened by these demonic population who were members of the royal order. They had a taken power again. Uh, then uh, she came to, um, to Lord Brahma with tears in her eyes. Earth is a planet. Sometimes we don't see that. She is actually a living being. And she reacts to the activities of the praja, or the population. And therefore, she is like mother. We refer to earth as mother. And when people are pious and religious, she gives her bounty in the form of the things that are needed to live nicely and happily. And when people are sinful, and that sinful activity continues, she restricts, and therefore, there is calamities on the earth, and here we have that situation. So in a very distressful way, she went to Brahmaji for help. Brahma's milk, where Shira Dakshai Vishnu was there, and offering beautiful prayers, as is mentioned, the Purusha Shukta prayers, they petitioned the Lord to please come and, uh, you know, do your duty. <laughs> We can't do it. We're demigods. This is beyond our control. These demons are too powerful. Only you can do it. And so they prayed to the Lord in a very sincere way. And the Lord knew, of course, the Lord knows everything ahead of time. 
So he knew everything about the situation, but he was waiting for them to come and ask. Because the Lord knows, just like it says in our practice of Krishna consciousness, the Lord knows what we need to become Krishna conscious. But we should pray for it anyway. Because that shows that our eagerness, and that eagerness and that enthusiasm is a feature of bhakti. That though the Lord knows everything and he knows what I need, still, simply we should still pray, pray for that because that accesses the mercy of the Lord. When, when he sees that we are sincere in trying to make advancement in devotional service, he responds to the prayers and gives us exactly what we need because he knows exactly what we need. <laughs> That's Krishna. So here, he's, he knew, as it's explained, by the acharyas, Krishna knew everything, but he was waiting for the demigods to come and pray. And then he, he gave his promise and, and he instructed them, he said, you also take birth in various families and appear on earth and then I will also appear. And that was Krishna's arrangement. But here we have a, a seemingly another reason why the Lord appears, and that is to give pleasure to his devotees. So although he says that in the Bhagavad Gita, that he does both, and he does both, the main reason why he comes is uh, to give pleasure to his devotees, to associate with his devotees, to uplift his devotees, to create more devotees, and to, uh, at the same time, simply by his presence, he immediately extinguishes the uh, demoniac feature of the earth. That's secondary. Prabhupada used to say, he can do that simply by sending a very powerful acharya or one of his own incarnations. But when he comes as Krishna himself, he's Lila Purushottam. He comes to perform his different leelas for the pleasure of his devotees. And then the whole atmosphere becomes purified and he purifies his devotees and then ultimately he reestablishes uh, dharma, or what we say, saintly rule again. And then after he leaves, everything goes starts to go down again. <laughs> this is the material world. And Prabhupada said, if you're not struggling to keep your Krishna consciousness, what we say, moving forward, you will move backward. That is the nature of this material world. We always have to be endeavoring Therefore, what do, how do we endeavor? And this, this Janmasthami day is actually a feature of that endeavor to use our time and energy to hear and chant the glories of the Lord. Because as we hear and chant the glories of the Lord, we become a, attached to the Lord. As we develop attachment for the Lord, that attraction becomes more and more. As attraction develops, then the feelings of emotion start to arise within the heart of the devotee and a devotee becomes fixed in, lo in loving relationship, in the mood of service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So this is a beautiful um, uh, expression of how Krishna unfolds his pastime so nicely. He puts his devotees in anxiety. You see that. His father and mother in, in Mathura, what did they have to go through in order to bring about his appearance in the world? No one could go through that. I mean, David, she's a mother, and anyone who is a mother, to watch her own children being killed by her own brother <laughs> is beyond mortification. It's just unbelievable pain and sorrow. Now, people would die simply by experiencing that. But somehow or other, Krishna allowed them to go through that just to increase their loving relationship with him. Krishna does that too. He does that to the devotees. He puts the devotees in sometimes difficult situations. These difficult situations appear to be difficult, but they, what, the, what they are are opportunities to go deeper in our relationship with Krishna. So devotees should always see that reverses in Krishna consciousness or reverses in our execution of Krishna consciousness are opportunities to reflect and go deeper into our relationship with Krishna. So difficulties are actually, as Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur says, opportunities 
to offer greater service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So a devotee is not, what we say, discouraged by things. They may also find some difficulty to accept them. But when we understand that for a devotee, Krishna is always there. He never leaves his devotees. But the devotees leave him sometimes. Although he's still there, we're gone. <laughs> we forget him. And then we try to undo our problems by our own intelligence and our own efforts, saying, well, Krishna, right now I have to get things straight and I'll be back. <laughs> but that's not the program. The program is to, to always remember Krishna, never forget Krishna. In that consciousness, one is always moving forward in devotional service. And Vasudev, Vasudev is amazing, actually, what he had to go through. He had the same time, he had to pacify his wife that she was going through so much and at the same time speak to Kamsa in such a way that he would not go beyond a certain point. Uh, when the initial uh, uh, voice from the sky well, during the marriage ceremony of Vasudev and Devaki appeared, Kamsa immediately became fearful. Uh, fear is a principle of the material world. The demons are fearful and they use fear to control others. That is their program. As long as they can create fear in others, they feel they are superior to control others by that fear. But they're also fearful of their own existence and therefore they just turn that around and use their own, the fear that they're experienced to control others through the same process of fear. That's the demons. And so he became so fearful, thinking that, you know, the ace son, as the uh, voice from the sky said, would be the cause of his death. And Kamsa, you know, he was quite ruthless. And so, uh, as Prabhupada also says, in relationship to the character of a demon, he says, the demons will do anything. And then he says it again, but he says it differently. They will do anything. <laughs> In other words, they'll kill their parents, they'll kill their children. Rani Kasipu, when he was, uh, you know, in opposition, his son was in opposition to him. He wanted to be a devotee. And he thought, oh, being a devotee, you're siding with my enemy. So... Therefore, you should give it up, and if you don't give it up, I'm going to make sure you die. But he couldn't kill Pallad, but he tried to. So this is the nature of a demon. They'll do anything to fortify their own sense gratification. So we should understand that. Because the world today is full of <coughs> demons. <laughs> As Prabhupada said in 1972, he said, the demons are increasing and they will continue to increase. But don't worry. He said, Krishna is here. He saved Devaki when she was in her prison cell. Although she had to go through some difficulties and some anguish, still he protected Devaki and ultimately at the end he returned her child, children, when she requested that from Krishna after the battle, after uh, Kamsa was killed. So Krishna is always wants to please his devotee and he always protects his devotee. Uh, what is that verse from the Bhagavad Gita? No, uh, 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 what's the, 9.30? Yeah, yeah. Apichet sudarajaro bhajate ananyabhak sadhu eva samanta bhyag samahi samavitan he saw is the last two words. Vyasitaha. Vyasitaha So yeah, Krishna emphatically declares this statement that as long as you're my devotee, you have nothing to worry about. You're always protected. As long as you stay within the confines of devotional service. In other words, if you work outside of devotional service you, you, and you say, well, I'm a devotee, well, devotee means devoted <laughs> and not something different. So we have to always stay 
close to the process of devotional service. And then you're always protected at, at all times. And Krishna will even give protection when we somehow stray away from the process. But generally we shouldn't put him in that situation that he has to work a little extra harder to protect us. <laughs> he will do that also. But that's Krishna. So, but we see here, and this is one of the main points, how a devotee will somehow have to undergo difficulty in serving the Lord. We have the example of Srila Prabhupada. When he tried to start this mission, how much difficulty he had to undergo. The reverses, the refusals, the uh, attempts on his life when he first came and then stealing his property. So many uh, difficulties that Srila Prabhupada and Prabhupada had complete faith in Krishna and the process of devotional service, but we saw that even Prabhupada was thinking, maybe I should go back to India, maybe this is not the time for my mission. But Prabhupada re re rethought his, uh, that thinking and said no, he decided to stay. And so we saw in the life of Srila Prabhupada an example of how Krishna puts his great devotees, and not, Prabhupada was not just a devotee, he was the best of all devotees in such difficult situations. But Prabhupada, Krishna, Prabhupada says in one statement, Krishna will not test you beyond your ability to pass the test. He'll not overwhelm you with a situation where you'll fall down. But sometimes you feel it's too much, right? Yeah, it's not like, it, Krishna, what are you doing? Don't you know who I am? <laughs> and you start, you know, the gray hairs start coming out and you start pulling them out. You start feeling that, why does Krishna forget me? But he doesn't. He's just uh, giving you a little bit of his special mercy to help you become more free from some material attachments or to purify you and make you more dependent on his mercy. So if we always remember that, then uh, difficulties are opportunities for spiritual advancement. But they're hard to see when they come, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just hard to see that because our tendency is things should go the way we want them, right? <laughs> we have our plan. And uh, that's mentioned, as it mentions in the Bhagavatam, when the uh, demons and the demigods were fighting, that's what they do all the time. <laughs> the demons are always harassing the saintly persons. And there was a big fight. And the demigods were quite powerful and they were killing the demons. But the demons had created this elixir of this nectar produced by Maya Donovan. And every time a demon was killed, he'd take the dead demon, throw him into that elixir, and he'd come back to life. He was even more powerful. And the demigods couldn't do anything. They were killing the demons, and the demons were coming back more and more. So uh, the demigods didn't know what to do, so he went to Brahma and said, Brahma, this is the situation. Brahma said, all right. So Brahma, and Shiva decided to incarnate as a calf and a cow, and they came to drink up the nectar. <laughs> and so they came to that pool of nectar and started drinking it. And then the demons were seeing, and then Maya Dhanava, he's, he's not only a demon, but he's also quite intelligent. He said, um, well, this is the plan of the Lord. <laughs> I can't do anything. <laughs> This is the Lord's plan. So Prabhupada in the uh, purport describing this particular pastime says, you have your plan and I have my plan and Krishna has his plan. <laughs> so which is the best plan? <laughs> Krishna's plan. So making our plan Krishna's plan means to, to very carefully with great enthusiasm and uh, follow the instructions of your spiritual master. When you do that, you're, you're connecting to Krishna's plan for you. And when we do that, we are also in the best situation, even if we slightly deviate from that situation. 
if if we're sincerely trying to follow, we'll always become, we'll always get the mercy of the Lord. Because Krishna knows what we want, what we need, actually. Sometimes people say, well, God knows everything. He knows, he knows past, present, and future. He knows what's going to happen to me in the future. So, I mean, what do I do? <laughs> it's already programmed. It's going to happen in a certain way. Yes, that's true. He knows exactly when you're going to become Krishna conscious or whether you're not going to make it. <laughs> he knows whether you're going to, whatever you're going to do in life, he knows. But what he does, and this is the point, he tries to change what is not right to what is right by giving you mercy in different ways. So being aware to or being open to that mercy helps us to change our destiny if the destiny is not according to Krishna consciousness. And then Krishna knows whether we're going to accept it or not, but he still tries to give it to us. He'll, be, he'll do so many things through the material energy, through the spiritual master, through the association of devotees to help us understand how we should act in such a way that will further our advancement in Krishna consciousness like that. So, therefore, as Prabhupada said, we have our desire, Krishna has his desire. But if we make our desire Krishna's desire, then it's perfect. Because Krishna always works for the benefit of others. What is that benefit that one can achieve eternal and lasting happiness? So when Krishna comes, he performs all of his activities. So in this particular pastime of Lord taking birth, you'll see he immediately went to Vrindavan, grew up as a young boy there in Vrindavan. And what did he do? One demon after another was coming to kill Krishna. What was the first demon? Who knows? You sure? <coughs> The cart demon, wasn't it? Putana was before the cart, Sakadashar. How old was Krishna when Putana came? Oh, he just barely opened his eyes. He just barely opened his eyes. Okay, so Putana was the first demon. Okay. So the first demon came was Putana. And she was, she disguised herself as a beautiful lady, came into Vrindavan. And everyone saw her as someone beneficial. Oh, she must be a demigoddess. And using her charm and her, what we say, lovely appearance, she went to the house of Nanda Maharaj and Mother Yasoda. And baby Krishna was there. He was only, I think you're right, he was only about three months old at the time. Yeah. And then she came, and Mother Yasoda said, Oh, she wants to offer her breast milk to Krishna. This is so nice. She must be very auspicious. So no one objected. She came right in and took Krishna. And in her mind, she was thinking, This, this boy is very powerful. <laughs> in the back of her mind, which came to the forefront of her mind occasionally, she was thinking, this person, he is very powerful. But still, with her desire in mind, she came, put Krishna on her lap, and offered her breast milk, but she had smeared this uh, very powerful, deadly poison on her breast nipple. And then Krishna said, oh, she's my mother. <laughs> So he had no enmity towards her. She was thinking he came. She she he was thinking she came to offer her nice service as a mother to me. So let me reciprocate. <laughs> and so he did. But he purified her at the same time. So in taking her breast milk, he 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 actually sucked out her life. <laughs> And when she when he did that, she turned again into her original form as a hideous monster, 
And this described in, in that pastime, she was huge. She was like nine miles long and very ugly. And her body is described in different features of the material energy. And everyone was shocked. But Krishna, he started playing around <laughs> on her body like, yeah, she's cool. <laughs> I, can, I can use her body to play around, slide down her slopey breasts. Mm, like a sliding pond. <laughs> no, I think Krishna likes to have fun. <laughs> he never, he's never in anxiety. <laughs> he enjoys, he enjoys killing the demons because he knows when he kills them, he actually gives them mercy. And that's hard to understand because killing is always seen to be something that is bad for the person who's being killed. But in the case of the demons, and when it's Krishna is involved, that demon gets liberation. And that demon actually, and Mother uh, uh, and Putana got a very high birth in her next life. In other words, she, she attained liberation almost on the level of Mother Yasoda. That was very high because she came as a mother and he saw her as a mother. This is Krishna. When that story was narrated to um, Pundarik Vididnidi by Mukunda, when Mukunda came with Gadadhar Pandit to show Muk Gadadhar Pandit the qualities of Pundarik Vididnidi, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had sent them there to meet Pundarik. Pundarik was actually an incarnation of Rishabhanu, Krishna Radharani's father, who appeared in Gorlila as Rishabhanu. And he was in a very, very opulent mood. He would wear very silken garments and very beautiful decorations. He would chew betel nut and his mouth was always red. He would have nice fragrances in his hair. He would take a mirror and look into the mirror and just smile at himself. <laughs> like ladies do in the morning, you know, getting, <laughs> getting ready to go out and give darshan. Anyway, not, not the devotees, but, you know, non-devotees do that. Anyway, so when uh, Gadadhar saw, oh my God, this person is, is a great devotee. Lord Chaitanya has sent me to him. He looks like an ordinary materialist. And he had servants. He had a beautiful mm, place that he was living with so many beautiful and, and opulent decorations. But then Mukunda picked up on Gadadhar's mentality and he thought, oh, Gadadhar is having some doubts. So then he, ch he, he chanted this verse, which is a glorification of Krishna killing uh, a whole bakiyam kalastala kutam, something like that. A whole bakiyam kalastala kutam. That uh, Krishna, seeing this demon coming to kill him, he treated her as a mother. And he gave her liberation on the same level, almost on the same level as Mother Yasoda. When he chanted that verse, Pundarik Vidyanidhi went mad. He went into ecstasy thinking of how merciful Krishna is. And this is the main point of our devotional service. We should always remember that Krishna is very, very kind. He's so kind that you can't find a better form of worship than Krishna. <laughs> Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wants to show Krishna's kindness, so he takes a, a form even more merciful <laughs> to make it to show even how, how that kindness can c extend beyond any logic or any reason. That even demons get, what we say, devotional service, jagai and madai. So Mahaprabhu is Krishna himself, but Krishna, he, he also showed that to relieve the demons of their miserable existence, he kills them. But what does he give them? A better situation. A situation where they're free from their material body and they can experience, at least for some time, the happiness of Brahman realization. Krishna, he's cool. He's a nice guy. Don't go away. Don't think there's anybody else worshipable, more, more worshipable than Krishna. 
or any other lifestyle that you can, can fulfill your desires perfectly and completely. Only in Krishna consciousness, because Krishna is always there to guide his devotees, correct us when we get a little bit out, out of line. But if you stay in this, Prabhupada said, just stay in Krishna consciousness. If you stay in it despite whatever difficulties you may undergo in your execution of devotional service, he said then, you probably will go back home, back to Godhead. You, you will go back home, back to Godhead. Just stay in this process. It is guaranteed. And going back home, back to Godhead means uh, the fulfillment of all desires perfectly, completely. What is that? Eternality, unlimited knowledge, and unlimited bliss. What do I mean? Unlimited means that there is no, that you know everything. <laughs> and you are experiencing the happiness of the ultimate principle of happiness, the association with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So Krishna's, and he goes out of his way, <laughs> to use a cliche, just to give us his mercy. He comes to this material world, undergoes some difficulties, he has to kill demons, he has to be told what to do, He's God, he's still being told what to do. <laughs> but he accepts these subordinate positions just to give pleasure to his devotees and just to act in his pastimes as an ordinary person. That's Krishna. Okay, so here, are, these are some of the, uh, I mean, I just touched on that. We could spend all time discussing this, but I think there's a Harinam coming up. Yes. At 10 o'clock. Any questions or comments? Yes, the Sundar Gopal Prabhu. You mentioned the killed the six sons of Devaki, yeah? Yes, and the seventh one, Balaram. Balaram, Krishna knew Balaram was about to appear, so he. In, he consulted with Yogamaya and said, Yogamaya, I'll have a service for you. The next child in Devaki will be the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Balaram. I want you to use your power to move him out of the womb of Devaki and bring him to the room of Rohini and Vrindavan. When she heard that, she was shocked. My God, what a, what a service that is try to transport the Supreme Personality of Godhead from one body to another. But Krishna said, don't worry, I'll empower you. <laughs> You'll be successful. <laughs> and this is another interesting point, that sometimes a, a service that we're given may be beyond our ability, or at least beyond our conceptual ability. But we should understand that where the, wherever the service is, wherever the order is, the, the, the power to carry it out also comes. It also comes. So she was successful, and therefore it appears that Devaki had a miscarriage, the seventh son, which was Balaram. But he, he was safely moved to Vrindavan to be out of the uh, you know, influence of Kamsa. Of course, Kamsa couldn't kill him, but in order to pr keep to protect the Leela, it appears that this is the way Krishna, and Krishna wanted to bring him to Vrindavan and be there when he got there, because then he, he became the older brother of Krishna. And then they performed their pastimes as Krishna Balaram. So, did you have a question regarding that particular? Yeah, he's Rohini Nandana. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he was moved like that simultaneously. And people question how is that possible? <laughs> it's not possible from the material point of view. But it's only possible by under the influence of the Daivi Shakti, the spiritual energy. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Yes, Mataji. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Oh, to have many, many wives. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ladies don't like that. <laughs> Generally. <laughs> but then it's a good thing because sometimes you can escape from your husband when he's busy with the other wives. So there is a benefit in that. <laughs> These wives, the, the, the queens. No, uh, husbands. The oh, to have ma uh, many husbands? Is that what? He was in many husbands and he can marry many wives. Not, it's not about the polygamy, is it? Well, that's called, what is that called? It starts with an A. Many husbands, what is that called? Polyandry. Uh, 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 polyandry? Yeah, polyandry is. Dr Draupadi, she had five husbands, the Pandavas. So what is the, the, the point or question? <laughs> so a, a little. Last time we had a lecture, and when Prabhu explained us that it's not about the polygamy, it's about the relationship between the Right. But it's because of many expansion of Krishna in different ways. But he expands in order to satisfy all of these ladies. The 16,108 queens were princesses that were captured by Bomasura and held captive. Krishna freed them. And then, after freeing them, they all proposed marriage to Krishna. And Krishna accepted them. And that's why you get that number, 16,108. That's how many there were. But Prabhupada, in explaining this particular Leela, he says, Krishna can have 16 million wives. For him, it's nothing. Because every woman is his wife anyway. <laughs> Prabhupada makes that point. I just yesterday it was Prabhupada was saying that he said it's just like he had sixteen thousand one hundred and eight wives. He didn't have to wait for sixteen thousand one hundred and eight days to see each one of them. <laughs> he uh, was simultaneously with each of them in different. And Narada Muni, when he came to Dwarka to to, to visit Krishna. He saw, he went to the different palaces and he saw Krishna performing his activities with his different queens. So in one house he was playing with the children, in another house he was, uh, you know, sitting with his wife. So he was doing different things in different houses with different wives. So it wasn't like a, well, oh, see, a television image where you have ten televisions and you're all on the same channel and everybody's watching the same program. No, they were all different. <laughs> Krishna was acting differently in each one of the different houses. And Narada Muni saw that. Krishna gave him that vision so he could see that. <laughs> and he was shocked. <laughs> shocked in amazement to see how Krishna was... Uh, giving pleasure and satisfaction and association to each one of the queens. Yeah, so Krishna is one. He expands in Eko Bahuna Bidadati Kaman. He is one, but he, ma he manifests himself as many. For God, that's not hard. <laughs> For us, it's impossible. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Welcome home. <laughs> um, I really like that this pastime with uh, Putana because it really is the hope. Uh, because her motivation was really just to kill Krishna, right. nothing else. Right. And still Krishna saw her as a mother. She wants uh, that she wants to feed him. Mm -hmm. And the result was she she was really 
Yeah, but Krishna was a little angry at her for killing all the other children. So he, that was one of the, he was feeling that anger towards her. But still, he accepted her as a mother at the same time. So my question here is, many devotees, when before they chant the Japa, mm -hmm. they approach it really with sincerity, with prayers, and mm -hmm. they, want, they want to go to Japa retreat just to get better in Japa. Be, come back next week, for you? Yes. <laughs> so the approach for that is really sincerity. Is, um, yeah. Yeah, but still, I would say, in my case, there is no Krishna here. So, because there are three stages of chanting holy names. Oh, yeah. So how come that the author is honest to, I mean, he wanted to do devotional service with really as much as he or she can? It's a process. But still, it's three stages of chanting. Yeah, and yeah. And I just wanted to kill him, and she got such a... Oh, why do we have to go through the long route? Well, you just become a demon, you can get killed by Krishna. <laughs> yeah, that's all. You want to go the short route? Okay. <laughs> but then again, he might, he might not kill you because he thinks, uh, she's a devotee, I can't do that. <laughs> and so you have to go through the long route. But, you know, what the verse is, um, susukam karta mabhyayam, that the, the process of devotional service is joyful. So, even if we have to struggle to perform our devotional service, it's an opportunity to show our love for Krishna. So, in one sense, it's, it's actually very pleasing. I mean, we all struggle with japa. Some of us more, some of us less. But the point is that uh, for a devotee, everything is auspicious. And uh, so, but Putana got, got something instant. But at the same time, you know, she, she didn't get bhakti. Devotees will get bhakti. And that is superior to any type of liberation. Even... According to our acharyas, Previously, of course, Putana appears and Krishna comes once in a day in Brahma, and so Putana also, the different incarnations of Putana come. So in, there are two explanations about who Putana was in previous lifetimes. Mm -hmm. One of them was that she was the daughter of Bali Maharaj. Mm -hmm. The other was that she was the sister of Bali Maharaj. Mm -hmm. But when Vamadadev walked into the arena, arena a sacrifice when Bali Maharaj was performing his sacrifice, then his sister or his daughter, she saw Vamanadev and she fell in love with him and wanted to become his mother. But then when Bali Ma when uh, Vamanadev took everything away from Bali Maharaj, okay. yeah. she became very angry and so, she wanted to kill him. So she had association with the Supreme Lord before that. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, so and, that was the point, that it was not the first time. Yeah. yeah, and therefore she had both mentalities. She wanted to mother him, and she wanted to kill him. Yeah. So Krishna arranges, she got both. Yeah, to see if he fulfilled her desire. <laughs> I believe she was also, took birth as uh, Sor Panaka in Ramachandra's pastimes. Mm. Interesting. And therefore she had <laughs> a lot of association. <laughs> she didn't change much, though. <laughs> she kept well, the original desire to please Krishna was there. Even she fell in love with Lord Ramachandra. Yeah. You know, so there's this. It was it's mixed devotional service, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to stay. Well, I think we should stay away from that type of mixture. <laughs> You're right. With the Moga, the reason why he got such mercy is that because of his connection with Sarvabhuma Bhattacharya. Because he was the nephew, uh, Lord Chaitanya showed him special mercy. So it's also your connections with someone who is dear to Krishna. That also makes the difference. Or you can also say that uh, a devotee, his generations of, because they've taken birth in that family, generations of his ancestors mm. become liberated. Yeah, 14 generations.
Yeah, and that's how auspicious it is. Sometimes you think, how can I help my relatives and friends? Just become a devotee. If you stay in devotional service, they're benefiting. It's called the Gyatha Sukriti. And do course, and if you become a pure devotee, they get, Prabhupada describes, they get liberation. What is that liberation? That in their next birth, wherever they are, they, they take birth in a family of Vaishnavas. So if you have some regard for your family members, become, you know, advanced in devotional service, and they will benefit also. Even if they're inimical towards you, still they will benefit. <laughs> Okay, anything else before we conclude? Yes, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Right. The sister of Ravana. Right. Yeah. Yeah, there's a place called Nasik which is north of Bombay. Nasik, the actual name of that city, means cut nose. <laughs> that's, the, that's the actual translation of Nasik. It's actually named after that Leela. <laughs> like that. Okay, so thank you. And so there's Harinam Sankirtan coming up. And then please come back for the rest of Janmashtami. <laughs> We're just beginning. <laughs> Sila Prabhupada ki jai.